With me now is Professor Martin Prince, and he's from the Institute of Psychiatry at King's College London. Professor, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Tell us, why are you here? What session are you involved with? So, I'm speaking in the session called Preparing for the Dementia Epidemic, and that really tells the story. So, uh, our research work has been work in uh, 12 countries worldwide, in Latin America, in Africa, in India, and in China. And we've been looking at the prevalence of dementia, uh, that's the proportions of older people affected, and trying to come up with estimates of the numbers of people affected worldwide, and how that will increase over the next uh, 20 to 40 years. So we're, we're talking about um, 36 million people with dementia now. Uh, we're estimating that that figure is going to increase to 66 million by 2030, and to 115 million people with dementia worldwide by 2050. So this is or should be uh, a topic of major concern for global health. So what challenges will come with this ageing population? I, I think there's a number of challenges. Um, in the second World Alzheimer report in 2010, having looked at the numbers of people affected, we looked at the economic cost globally. Uh, this amounts to a little over 600 billion US dollars. And this cost is coming from a number of different areas. It's coming from um, the cost to governments directly uh, because of the services that they will need to provide, particularly the long-term care services to support people in their own homes in the community, or in high-income countries when people with dementia move into residential care or nursing homes. Uh, it comes to an extent from healthcare costs, so those are, those are quite modest at the moment, but likely to rise rapidly. Um, but it also comes from the unpaid contributions of family members who care for older people with dementia, who are the cornerstone of the system in all countries worldwide, but most particularly in lower middle income countries when there are very few services. So um, given the increase in the numbers of people with dementia, we're going to see an increase in costs, which if governments do nothing to anticipate this, are going to become increasingly difficult for governments to be able to manage. So there need to be initiatives to try and prevent the increase, the rise in numbers of people with dementia, and also initiatives to try and better manage people with dementia in the community and support their families. So in your opinion, as a community, do you think that you're prepared for these challenges? Do you think that the right infrastructure is in place? I think that the big difficulty is that this epidemic is, is going to be concentrated over the next 30 or 40 years. So the biggest increase uh, in the numbers of people with dementia is actually going to be happening not in high income countries, uh, but in low and middle income countries that are currently least well prepared because they lack resources and also because awareness is at a very, very low level indeed. So I think that's the major concern about the epidemic. I think high income countries have been making great progress in terms of giving due priority uh, to dementia and dementia care. That's been slow in coming, but we're now seeing in uh, many countries that are developing national dementia strategies, for example, with new investment in dementia care, in research uh, and in prevention. But in low and middle income countries, I think there's a tendency to think that uh, we're a traditional society, we have large and extended families, families are coping with this problem at the moment, and they'll carry on doing so in the future. But that's probably actually a naive belief for a number of reasons. So would you say that not everyone is necessarily playing their part? I think no country worldwide has actually adequately thought through the economic and the social implications of this coming epidemic. Uh, and every country, even the best resourced and the best prepared, needs to do more. Uh, for example, the World Alzheimer report that we prepared last year, 2011, um, focused on early diagnosis and treatment. And it's our estimate, even in high income countries, that half to two thirds of people with dementia in the community have actually never had a diagnosis, let alone the benefit of any treatment or care. That figure could be as high as 90% in low-income countries. So we need to have community-based health services that are actually set up and established to be able to identify the problem, to be able to make the diagnosis in the right way, to offer support and continuing support and care over the lifetime of the person with the condition. 
uh, and support and care that's extended to the family members as well. And I think in many ways the long-term care challenges could partly be met in the same way. Uh, what we've shown, for example, in high-income countries is that very simple caregiver interventions, that's giving information, education, training and support to the carer to better manage the sorts of problems that they encounter in day-to-day -day life, looking after a family member with dementia, that this can actually uh, reduce the uh, risk of that older person with dementia having to move into an institution by as much as a third. So there could be, uh, as well as quality of life benefits for the carers, for the family, for the person with dementia, the huge cost savings actually through a little bit of investment in this proven effective uh, intervention. In low income countries, I think that you can't rely on families continuously, automatically, uh, always to shoulder this burden. And you need to look at incentivising uh, the process of family care. So you need to show that governments, that societies actually value um, the role of family members. You can do that uh, through fiscal initiatives, for example, by offering uh, pensions, disability pensions, caregiver benefits to recognise the role of the carer. And you can also do it by providing healthcare and social services that actually meet their needs for support.